the first trivet here is a very simple design, but we've seen it a lot in New Zealand in hotels. Pretty much it is two pieces of stock, three quarters of an inch thick, half an inch wide, and about eight and three quarters of an inch long. In the center of it is a loose half lap. So I got the stock for the two pieces prepped. Then you'll want to find the halfway mark on it and mark three eighths of an inch out from both sides of that. And that should give you about three quarters of an inch. For the depth of the half lap, you'll want it to be more than half the thickness of your stock. I sawed the two sides of that half lap and cleared out the waist with a chisel. I did go slow with this chisel so that I didn't tear out any of the grain. So the first trivet is not very exciting and it's not a real difficult build. You can get that done in a half of an hour. I wanted to make one that had a grid pattern in it that went halfway through on both sides. Um, you'll see what I mean. But this piece is six inches by six inches and the grid pattern starts three quarters of an inch in from all four sides. And then I marked another grid inside of that where everything's a half of an inch. I used my brazen bit to drill out all the intersections around the perimeter. And then a square and a marking knife was used to draw out the lines in between all the holes. On the other side of this piece of wood, the pattern is turned 90 degrees. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. I used a chisel to clear out some of this waste and I didn't do a very good job because I started chipping pieces out and I just decided to give up. So the third trivet is the same exact design as the second trivet, but I was going to try a different approach to it. Um, I went through and I marked all 25 intersections and I used that half inch auger bit to drill out all 25 holes. Um, with the auger bit, you only go in until you feel the snail come through the other side, flip the board over, and then finish out the hole. I know this looks like a lot, but this really only took about six minutes. And I would tell you, if you can find a good uh, brace and bit auger bit set at any flea market or yard sale, pick it up. You can sharpen them fairly easy, and they're, they just drill really nice holes. This time for the grooves, I went a lot slower, tapping straight down with the chisel and then clearing out the waist. Here you can see how the pattern is turned 90 degrees on the opposite side. Once I got close to the center point of the piece of wood, I started using my router plane to make a smooth bottom edge to each one of those intersections. I didn't do a very good job on the walls of these dados. There was a lot of tear out, so I did use sandpaper to sand a lot of it back. And then I use that sandpaper to round over all the edges. It's dinner time, I need to go eat. So I'm gonna leave these out here to dry. Probably take this back up tomorrow morning with light sanding and then they're done. Two stick versions, actually pretty nice and they're really useful. So I'll probably make a couple more of those. This other one, <laughs> I always like the look of those, but I think I'll make that again when I have a router table 
actually set up, like a power router table setup. That's a lot of dadoing and grooving. I know these were simple projects, but I would like to tell you that there's going to be bigger projects coming that aren't simple. Um, I have a number of large beams over here drying out and uh, a few more gifty ideas, but we're going to get out of the kitchenware stuff for a while. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe so you don't miss any of those projects coming up, or if you liked any of this stuff, please give me a thumbs up for some motivation and leave a comment. Hope you guys have a good week and make this kind. Don't make this kind. There's a lot of trouble with making these damn things, except for these two are easy, but holy smokes. I mean, come on.